guys, we made it to our home for the night. We are outside of Gallup, New Mexico. A storm is brewing. Don't mind me with this pacifier. Hey, we told them Flip there's going to be pacifiers and burp claws all over the place, so they better get used to it. <laughs> Bye! Adios, amigos. Well, guys, we've had a great time up here in the White Mountains of Arizona. And today, it's time to move. Our friends that were camped down here ended up taking off. And uh, we are going to be doing the same. We are headed north uh, towards New Mexico. So I just want to touch real quick on Starlink. Uh, we've had it out here. It's been okay, not perfect. It's the only thing that works up here. So no Verizon, no AT&T, no T-Mobile, nothing works. So it's nice to have. It was extremely fast at times, like 130 down, 20 up. But the problem was is that it was dropping quite a bit. And the app, the Starlink app told me that. And it told me it was because of the trees and the area that we were in. But you know what? It was still great to have it. We were able to get a video edited, edited, and we were able to uh, stream TV at times, although it would buffer occasionally. Overall, we're stoked that we had it, and uh, it was nice, because it's just good to have internet in case there's an emergency. And like we showed you guys earlier in a previous video, this little husky tote stores everything great, and when you put it in stow mode, obviously the lid closes, and I really like this setup so far because we were able to bring it out here into this field and get service. If I had it on a flagpole permanently attached to the RV, you know, there's no way we would have had service. So it's nice to have that ability to put it on the roof if I want or put it out in this field with our, I don't know, 100 foot of cable. Topping off the old water before we hit the road. We got about, I don't know, maybe a week. We don't know yet until we have water again. So everyone's different, but we tend to pretty much roll with a full water tank because we do so much boondocking. So today we're leaving here. We're driving about two and a half ish hours. And then we're going to be at a new boondocking spot for probably two nights. And then I think we're doing a Walmart. So it'll be three nights. And then I don't know after that, we haven't planned that far ahead yet. So for us, we just got to fill her up and have enough because you know, we live out of this thing. Home is where you park it. Now the reason we like our travel trailer, pretty good off-road. Unless it's the queen driver. Hopefully this spot will be okay. All right guys, we made it to our home for the night. We are outside of Gallup, New Mexico. The storm is brewing. Don't mind me with this pacifier. Hey, we told them Flip there's gonna be pacifiers and burp claws all over the place, so they better get used to it. <laughs> I didn't want to say it earlier today because I didn't want to jinx this, but the Jeep ran phenomenal. Phenom phenomenally. 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 Uh, no vapor locking issues because today the average temp was probably what, like 80, 85? Mm -hmm. And it ran great. The Ram had low coolant light a couple times, so we pulled over for that. Cubby Lincoln did great needed to be usual. topped off a couple times, so we pulled over for that. But he slept pretty much the whole time. Yeah, he did great. So, um, not a terrible drive day. I felt like that. That felt pretty good. Yeah. Getting back into the rhythm of things, and uh, we're just going for a walk. We're going to have some dinner, probably watch a movie, chill out, try not to get too wet from this storm over here. I'm going to go for a short walk That's before the rain starts. Pretty ominous, but <laughs> we'll chat tomorrow.
Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Morning coffee time. Got my big hat on. Cheers, Barley. Got Link on. Got Zamba Damba. We are just outside of Gallup, New Mexico right now, cruising along the historic Route 66. Yeah, we did that last night. It was pretty fun. Um, it's a little bit run down, but it looks like they're kind of trying to revamp it here in Gallup. Yeah, it's pretty cool. And then we went over to um, Church Rock, which is like this really interesting geological feature. I really don't know any, anything else about it, but <laughs> yes. it just it looks like a church. Um, so it's that. aptly named. And uh, today we are continuing on to Bisti Badlands. Yes, I don't know exactly uh, how to pronounce it, but that seems pretty close. I think uh, we're going to stay there for a night. <laughs> yes. And then we're eventually going on upward to Durango to meet up with some friends. Yeah. Um, and while we're here in New Mexico, we thought that we would let everybody know we're actually working on a public lands cleanup event here in New Mexico, um, just outside of Albuquerque, correct? Yes. So we were talking to you guys a couple videos ago or a video ago when we were cleaning up trash in Flagstaff about how we were working on this event and we finally got approval and we are going to be doing a cleanup September 24th this year. So that's what, about almost two months? Two months, yeah. Two months away. Melissa's walking through mud. It's Don't very, mind her right it's now. very muddy right here. Yeah, we got a thunderstorm last Ooh. night. Anyways, two months from now, September 24th, it is a Saturday. There is boondocking nearby. So we plan on probably boondocking maximum stay of two weeks in that area. Um, it's close to the Albuquerque balloon fiesta. It's like, what, a week or two after the cleanup? Correct. And then this area is kind of in between Santa Fe and Albuquerque. Um, it's you, pretty close to Santa Fe. Yeah, you can look up the Caja del Rio dispersed camping area. Yeah, and we can put all that right here. Mm -hmm. um, we'll put the location of where we're picking up trash. We'll put the location of where we're going to boondock. Um, we're going to cook food to some extent. We have no idea how many people are coming. This is the first announcement. Yeah, we are. So spread the word. <laughs> Come if you want. If you have questions, let us know. We're super excited about it. Well, I am. Yeah, we are working with the National Forest um, to go out to this area and clean up. We contacted them so they could help us identify an area of need. We've actually never been there, but we've heard from other YouTubers that there is a lot of trash in this area. So we're excited to help get out there and clean it up. And hopefully we can get as many of you involved as possible. Yes, more details to come. And one more thing, totally random, but I gotta give a shout out to Enduro Batteries and uh, Nomad Mods. Our solar has been working flawlessly. Yesterday, it, gave, it became 80 degrees. We turned the AC on for a hot minute, and unfortunately, our gas water heater has been acting up. So we've been running our electric water heater because we can. We have the battery bank and we have the panels. Um, right now, it's quite sunny. So this morning we had the coffee pot on and the electric water heater and we were pulling 2,600 watts and you know, we woke up at 90%. The whole system just is not phased whatsoever. But we're gonna pack up, we're gonna get moving and we're excited to show you the next stop. Made it to camp, bud. What do you think? It's weird out there. It looks like Mars. Our next stop was the Bisti Denazi Wilderness Area. Per the BLM's website, this is a rolling landscape of badlands, which offers some of the most unusual scenery found in the Four Corners region. Time and natural elements have etched a fantasy world of strange rock formations made of interbedded sandstone, shale, 
mudstone, coal, and silt. The weathering of the sandstone forms hoodoos, weathered rock in the form of pinnacles, spires, cap rocks, and other unusual forms. Fossils occur in this sedimentary landform. Translated from the Navajo language, Bisti means a large area of shale hills. Denazi takes its name from the Navajo word for cranes. Alright y'all, um, after enjoying a great hike last night, we hit the road again today for a short drive. We are going to Colorado. So this will be Cub's fourth state and he's not even three months old yet. Super stoked for this little dude, you can't see, but he's sleeping. So yeah, we're, we're heading north to Colorado and we'll probably be in Colorado for a while. Our next stop was Pleasant Journey Alpacas. It's a harvest host and you should definitely check it out. She just wants a treat. So if you want to get her a treat like that, yeah, she just wants a treat as well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't forget Grayson. What are the treats? These are uh, apple or peppermint horse treats actually. Come on Grayson, get it. Yeah, so the brown one is <laughs> Hi, buddy. Hi. Twenty minutes later. Pleasant Journey Alpacas. This is a Harvest Host's location. If you're not familiar with Harvest Host, I don't know what rock you have been living under, but basically Harvest Host is a service that you pay for, and then they give you listings of like farms, breweries, wineries, ranches, whatever. Museums. Museums mm -hmm. uh, that allow you to stay overnight on their property. You are supposed to buy and support the company place whatever yeah um so if, if it's, it's a restaurant you get some food yeah like we bought some alpaca socks alpaca yarn and a alpaca christmas tree ornament so that's how we support them and then they let us stay the night and it's cool they gave us a tour they showed us the alpacas they talked all about alpacas i don't really i can't remember i know there's like three different types and i know that they're related to llamas and camels mm -hmm. Uh, they chew, I mean, you can see it in the way that they move. They're either they chew like this. They're very soft. They're pretty nice overall. They have long necks. Yeah. Uh, they like to be pet on the necks and the back. Ooh, the guardian dogs were the best. <laughs> the guardian dogs were really cool. Um, and it's the just a farm. beautiful farm. We've actually been Harvest Host members for the past three years since we pretty much first hit the road. And it's really nice because it just offers a little bit of a different type of camping experience. Um, 99, well, 90% 90 of the time you have to be fully self-contained. Some of the hosts offer like electric and water and certain things like that. And usually they'll ask for a little bit more of a 
a donation for something like that. But the membership to access um, all of these different places and the whole network um, on their app is about $100 a year, I believe. I, so. I'm not actually positive because we've been grandfathered in at the uh, previous price. So don't know what it is, but I think it's 100 And for us, it's really nice because... Yeah, we could have stayed at a Walmart in the area, but it mixes it up We're on this beautiful ranch and mm -hmm. we're supporting small business. So it's definitely fun to do and it's nice to support small business. Be sure to tune in next week when we finally get to one of our favorite towns in Colorado, Durango. We explore the downtown, go shopping, have lunch, and even look into some real estate.